The Lies We've Been Told Welcome to the Society of Nova Spiritus Sunday Service. Are you new to Nova Spiritus? The Society of Nova Spiritus was founded by the late Sylvia Brown. You can read in several of her books how she dreamed of starting a church that believes in an all-loving mother and father God. And one evening at a lecture, she announced the beginning and asked, Who wants to help? Then, the first Sunday service was held July 12th of 1986. Novus is Sylvia's monument to God, a forum to express the joy and love that is God, with no fear, no guilt, no sin, no hell, and no Satan. Through Novus, Sylvia gives the world a means to understand God, life, and the reason for being. You can read more details on our website at novus.org. Uh, looks like we're doing well here. Uh, welcome. I'm the host, Reverend Tom Bigley. You can learn more about me by watching previous videos and listening to the New Spirit Radio podcast on what Facebook and YouTube. Uh, a quick outline for those of you that are new. Uh, grab a, some. Grab your communion edibles. You know you can always pause this and uh, go grab your items and come back. Um, Grab your communion edibles. You can light a candle if it's appropriate. And grab your children. I mean, encourage them to join you for the blessing prayer. Uh, or find a picture of the children that, they'll, that they'd like to be blessed. F find a picture of the children that you'd like to be blessed. And also some holy water. Um, you can always... Uh, you know, if you don't have any, well, you can come back and watch or watch and come back with some holy water later and do the blessing uh, with me. Um, there are recipes. If you go to the New Spirit Radio Show, there are several um, uh, segments where we've talked about uh, holy water and a recipe for it. Now, sit back, relax, and visualize that we're all gathered in a small auditorium and enjoy this is the blessing of the children's uh, ceremony. Uh, prayers are in the description, and our speakers are a classic of Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown. Here's a brief outline uh, of how the, the um, service is going to go. I'll start by lighting the candle, and then I get into the opening prayer. I'll introduce, and we get to listen to our speakers. Then that'll be followed by, let's see, we have a meditation by Sylvia for this service. Uh, that f is followed by the communion prayer and communion what, that we celebrate together. And then I uh, say the healing prayer. I'll talk about some collections and announcements, and there's new information to share with you. Uh, there'll be a prayer for the blessing of the children, as well as the blessing itself. I'll talk about petitions and testimonials. We'll have a moment of silence. Uh, then I'll read the benediction uh, for all of us to part participate in. And then I conclude with the closing prayer. From that, uh, I extinguish the candle. So now I'd like to start with... Candle lighting. There we go. And of course, you know, light one where you are at if it's appropriate for the location or, you know, the little um, uh, flickering lights. Uh, those are cute too, just to give that ambiance. Yeah, on occasion, um, when we had, uh, where and when we've had um, in-person services, sometimes we've had to use the, uh, uh, the flickering lights because of the, you can't light a candle. So welcome to the Society of Nova Spiritus. Good morning, everyone. Uh, now is the time to silence your cell phones. You know, think of it as um, an appointment. You know, if you go to your doctor, you go to the dentist, you usually are turn your cell phone off, at least I do, uh, during those times or when I don't want to be disturbed. And, you know, make that time, make this that time for yourself that you don't want to be disturbed. Also, um... If you're in a group or you're, you know, watching this in a group or if you want, while you're watching this, leave a, a message in the comments. You know, invite, invite everyone uh, to a friendship greeting. So post in the uh, comments or if you're in a group, turn to 
your partner left or right and say hi how are you doing glad you got glad you're here and we're sharing this together we come together to pay homage to mother and father god as we support one another in our search for truth at this time we normally collect petitions but um, you can write them in the comments, uh, you know, regardless of when you watch this. Or if you'd like to leave a private prayer request, you can post uh, the prayer on our prayer chain uh, on our website at novus.org. The prayer chain petitions are private and they're between you and God. No one ever reads what you've written uh, for the private petitions. And typically in-person petitions, they're collected uh, at services and are taken after service and are usually burned or shredded, you know, depending on what's appropriate for the location. And all of this, it's symbolic of giving your request to the power of the universe to get that energy out there. And then uh, typically ashes or the shreddings are then placed in a garden. Now I'd like to start with the opening prayer. Again, you can read along, they're in the um, description, or you can uh, listen along with me. Dear Father and Mother God, please bless our efforts in this renewed religion. Let the new spirit of enlightenment rinse out all guilt and fear. We come to you, God, knowing that you know our name, knowing that you know our hearts, minds, and souls. We want to learn our lessons so that we can make the journey of life easier so that we can perfect faster than we have throughout all our lives. From this moment on, we will be, from this moment on, we will love ourselves and others and let your supreme love light the lamp of our souls. We will be imbued with love and judgment of will to get us on track and keep us on our perfection scheme. We will truly be a light in a lonely desert that enlightens many. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sadal, Sacravillian, Ahad. And the translation is, Blessed be this queen on high, who's sacred to all who come to her. And let's see, what special message will you get from listening to Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown's Sunday talk? Uh, and remember, it's okay to laugh together at their unique no-nonsense humor. So let me introduce... Um, Larry Beck and Sylvia Brown. Join me in welcoming our speakers today, Larry Beck and our love, Sylvia Brown. Good morning one more time. It's uh, very pleasant to be back with you guys. We've missed you. Uh, we have been busy though. And I guess today what I'm going to do is sort of give the update on Sylvia activities that have been numerous of late. Uh, where should I start? Uh, the beginning. <laughs> and I'd like to welcome our visitors from Seattle. Where'd they go? Oh, there he is. Greg, welcome. <laughs> That's Greg something. It's like 30 something. Uh, let's see, uh, I'll start with something that I can recollect, uh, yesterday. <laughs> we just got back from two days off, and now today, this very day, after church, we're on a plane to Portland, Oregon. And if anyone has relatives in Portland, uh, tell them to watch Sylvia Monday morning on the um, AM Northwest show, KATU. We'll be talking about, of course... Sylvia's work as a spiritual teacher. And in addition, we'll be bringing our new videotape, which nobody has yet. But you know that. But we have an advanced copy of the box. <laughs> and yes, I will announce this. Expect all the people that have ordered the tapes, expect them at your place by June 12th. Maybe a little sooner. But the unexpected demand has just swamped the order processing people, which is not us, <laughs> thankfully. Anyway, so June 12th, look for that. So we'll be in Portland uh, tomorrow doing some TV and then a radio spot, then we'll come back. Now I do uh, have another Montel show, we're coming up here actually Wednesday, the 24th. 
And that's the other part of our uh, recent journeys. We did uh, go to New York last uh, week ago, a week ago today. We left Sunday, Mother's Day, and got into New York Sunday evening. And we did, as always, two, count them, two shows for Montel. And, and what? Oh, yes, and a promo for the best of Montel, which will air sometime this summer. It'll be clips of stuff, and a lot of which will be Sylvia's work. Anyway, we did two more shows for uh, Montel. One will air Wednesday, and we do need anybody uh, that's interested to come down volunteer and help with our phones, because they're a nightmare on a Montel day. So that'll be Wednesday if anybody has free time. Uh, you might want to chat with Michael or any of the staff about getting on down and helping out. But anyway, during those tapings of Montel, Sylvia was brilliant, and uh, possibly... Uh, I don't know, every time we go there and she does another show, I keep saying, boy, these are the best shows Sylvia's done. <laughs> and uh, even as Sylvia was mentioning after the fact, uh, she's nervous doing them, but is enormously uh, relieved afterwards. And Sylvia says, yes, I feel the presence truly of our beloved queen, Asna, there. And uh, one of the things I get to do is, just before the uh, show goes on, I uh, spend my time planting little light columns in every chair, <laughs> asking art types to invade the minds and attitudes of the audience. And the result, I guess, is truly divine because I uh, see the big difference by doing that. And when we invoke Mother God's name, magic happens. And Sylvia is like razor sharp. The psychic stuff is like premier quality and the audience and here's the tough part New York audiences are loving and this is not a typical audience behavior in New York so I give enormous kudos to Asna for being there and making the magic and they truly love everything she does and everything Sylvia says and of course, when she does the right on stuff, they're just cheering and happy. And, uh, and we had another pleasant skeptic stand. Pleasant because Sylvia torpedoes them big time. I don't see how you people can believe anything that woman's saying up there because why, why would you believe anything she says at all? <laughs> <You know. laughs> and Montel invariably goes, okay, Sylvia. Get it. And you can see the audience shift away a little bit. <laughs> like lightning's coming. And she destroyed him. I mean, just uh, destroyed him. And the good, the good news is when he sat down, he, said, he does this to Sylvia. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's almost a rook because um, when Sylvia's mad, she's the best. So when people make her mad, she's the best. So if you ever have a reading, just piss her off. Uh, but one thing I will say, and I, Pam Treckler, Treckler's not here. Treckler, no. She made our trip very nice to New York. She's got connections and put us up into business class. So we flew in style and we had a lovely time there. Montel treated Sylvia like literally a queen. Uh, the people were, were so respectful. It's, um, I don't know what the feeling is. They, they treat her so well, and it's refreshing, because I certainly don't. <laughs> so it's nice to know someone does. But the staff was like, clear the halls, Sylvia's coming, and it's like, wow. And Montel forced us to go to the Russian tea room for dinner. And if anybody knows that, uh, particular locale, very elegant, very nice. Uh, he was going to buy us tickets to any Broadway show we cared to see. It uh, turns out that was Equity Day, which in the union parlance means nobody's working. So we got to just go out to have a nice dinner. And Bruce Willis is opening his new movie in, just down the street at Planet Hollywood. Die Hard with a Vengeance. We had such a lovely time. It was very, very good for all of us. Um, Oh, yeah. Now, 
So Wednesday, watch the Montel show. There will be another one in July. I'm not sure the exact date. Um, Sylvia is <laughs> is being uh, hired by Universal Pictures to represent the Casper show. Spielberg, Amblin Entertainment, pardon me, Universal Productions, Amblin Entertainment, Spielberg, hiring Sylvia to be the Casper, the movie, spokes, psychic. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Sylvia Brown, spoke psychic for Casper. Uh, we don't know exactly how this is going to come down, but it's going to happen Thursday. So we're flying to L.A. Thursday as Universal Studios has a new, um, you know, their theme park down there, the Universal Studios Tour. They're having a new exhibit dedicated to the Casper phenomena. And so they want Sylvia to come in and open the exhibit officially in some kind of way. <laughs> We're not sure how this will happen, but uh, Sylvia's sure. But we'll get press coverage, and that, of course, is the good news. And uh, as Sylvia always does, she can talk about soul survival whenever she talks about spo spooks and ghosts. The message is soul survival. And the message then, obviously, the next question is, where does the soul go? Heaven. What's this? God. Oh, my word. So I promise you, she's going to have another platform to speak about the spirituality of the soul uh, couched in the form of Casper the Friendly Ghost. So I'm rather pleased about that. The other big deal, uh, some of you may or may not watch what's called the X-Files. Apparently a very popular. Well, they have hired Sylvia to be the spokesperson at the conventions that are springing up across the country. So we have three gigs <laughs> where Sylvia is the featured thing. <laughs> thing, I don't know. But the creator of X-Files, Chris Carter, is wild and crazy for the fact that Sylvia is going to be at his convention. So uh, some kind of connections will come from this. I don't know what, but it's all good. It's always good. We've been very busy. I think she's nervous about me talking so long. But, uh, but I have plenty more to say, uh, but I probably won't. Anyway, uh, I do uh, ask for you to join with me in welcoming Sylvia Brown, the Casper Girl. When I talked to the people uh, for Casper, uh, it was quite interesting because I sold the idea that the survival of the soul was the most important and the creator that was uh, Harvey. Um, and I got, actually got the first name and I didn't know it, which I know you find that to be amazing since I'm psychic, but <laughs> I told him they wanted to do first an exorcism and I said, no, we don't believe in that. And I said, what I'd like to do is show that whoever the creator was, was trying to show that there was survival of the soul and so that's how I'm going to approach it. So even if it's a cartoon, it's going to come across very um, seriously. What I also picked up the other night when I was lying in bed praying was that the man who created this had lost a child. And the only way he could come to grips with this was that he made this little Casper person into a friendly ghost. And so that through this anomaly, this little Casper person lives on in immortality. So I thought that was quite a sweet thing and I intend to fully bring that up. Um, I want to talk today about the lies we've been told and I want to address the non-control issues that we also were fed a bunch of stuff when we were younger. We believed first of all that we could grow up and we could live happily ever after, didn't we? We believe that regardless of our sexuality, our religious background, our creed, our color, life would be good to us. No. 
We also believe that somewhere in the world there would be a perfect someone who would cherish and love us forever. We also believe that we would have possibly, male or female, that we would have great careers or possibly we would be a mother or a father and have perfect children. <laughs> and we were told this, were we not? And unfortunately, religion was the one that told us more than anyone that if we were good, if we were good, these things would come our way. So most of us, majority, started out and we tried to be good. And even though I don't like the word try, when we were younger that was the whole idea was I'm aspiring to. And no matter how good we seem to be, things didn't happen right. So religion came in and said, the reason why it isn't is because you're still not good enough. And then, as most of us have want to do, somewhere along the line, most normal people, you either give up trying to be good because you don't know what it means anyway, and then you can go into the area of despair. And despair is a frightening place to be. It's different than depression. Depression can happen, like I've gone through depression after my father's death. That's normal. Despair is abnormal. It really is against, that's that deep hole in which no light gets in. But it's because it's very much like a parent who constantly tells a child that you're stupid or you're bad or you're rotten or you're lousy and eventually what happens? you become it. Now what's even worse about in many ways is this, if you're good, if you're good, if you're good, you will get blessings and God will love you and everything will happen fine. And then when things don't happen fine, your logical mind says, God must hate me. God has to hate me. And then of course, we had the parapsychologist coming in saying, well it's because you lived a bad life in another life of which you have no recollection of and you can't understand how you could have been an executioner in some life or whatever you were supposed to do and that's why you were having you know shingles in this life <laughs> so it doesn't matter isn't frightening and I look we as Gnostics we must follow a middle line we don't believe in the karma that slaps back on people that is from some past life yes we know we carry morphic resonance and we know that each life is a learning process. But we've got to get out of this that it is we are suffering now because we were an evil, bad person in some life. Because usually, you see, what you must understand is evil, bad people start out to be evil, bad people. They don't change. I know that sounds so cut and dried. Do you really know in your heart, can you think in your heart right now that there's some people that you know, and we shouldn't judge this, but at least according to this lifetime, this time span we had, that are really unredeemable? Yes, we know them. And it's not because we're judging, there's just no light that we can feel that comes into that soul. Well, maybe in some lifetime, they will get the light. If not, that's not our business. And God will eventually absorb them anyway. And possibly they were all here to make us miserable so we'd learn over them. Because they certainly have. Now, if you have your world and your own program from God coming in through this way and not through this way, you're not going to fall prey to the I should have had, I didn't have, I wish I could have had, I wish I did because that's so demoralizing. And most of the time, my spiritual counseling, which I do so much of anymore, so much more now in 10 years, the last 10 years that I did before, which is a great indication of where the world's going, by the way, is that in your soul's call, and there is a call to the soul, is that forget all this out here. Yes, we have to live life. 
but the fact that you were supposed to have a picket fence and a wonderful job and everyone would love you and you would be perfect health and you'd be strong and beautiful and great and handsome and forget it. Just forget now that programming. What you're going to do now, what we're all aspiring to do now is strengthen the soul of us. And that's the only thing that is not transparent. That is the only thing that is solid. All these goofy things that hang up there, even in myself, and I was telling Dan this morning, when we were sitting over there, we were talking about some of the celebrities or whatever, and I'm not going to mention any names. But I think what happens is two things affect people, and I've seen it so much in what they call the celebrity status is that they get too involved with their own press releases <laughs> and believe them. And the fact that they get into greed because it's so ridiculous because who you are is who you are. And who I am now as Sylvia will be the same Sylvia, hopefully, that I have been here, that I am here, and that I will take with me. The, what is that noise? Damn birds. <laughs> I love beer, birds. We can't take down our Christmas wreaths because a bird made a nest in it. <laughs> <sighs> we won't take it down. So everybody says, you're going to take it down the Christmas. No, there's babies, birds. We can't let them, you know. <laughs> when I was younger, my grandmother was very full of whimsy and wisdom. And she used to say to me, and I'm sure we've all heard this, life is what you make of it. Oh, it sounds so, it's like a platitude, isn't it? You say, oh yeah, fine. All of a sudden you wake up one day and you say, what I make of it? Did I gripe about the fact of what I didn't get? And that's what I'm seeing more and more of. I didn't get. It, when is my turn come? Let me tell you now, never. <laughs> Never. You don't get a turn in life. Do you know that? Quit walking around saying, but I've done this and I've done that and doesn't got... No. You don't get a lot of brownie points in this life. On the other side, you get it. You don't get it here. That's not being negative. If you stop with this false dream business and live in the now of what you have now, in this moment... We only have each other. Right now, that's what we have. I love what St. Francis said. And he was actually playing, can you believe it, St. Francis, a game of billiards. And they came up to him and they said, what would you do if someone told you that the world was going to end in five minutes? He said, I'd go on playing the game. That's a marvelous way to look at life. Am I going to die? Yes. Am I going to live happily? Probably not, unless it's in here. This is the only place that can be happy. Do you know that? This is the only creation you know. And our Lord said it over 2,000 years ago. The kingdom of God is within. Melvin said, in every man, he either creates his heaven or hell. So stop with this, where's Mrs. Wright, where's Mr. Wright, where's the perfect job? Not that we don't want to aspire, because without that, then you become communistic. Of course we want to aspire, but not with such ferocity that that glamour or that house or that car or that man or that woman or that child or that, that it destroys you because the pity party then becomes, I didn't get it. I had a wasted life. Nobody loved me, and I'll go eat some worms. <laughs> and when you're around these people, don't they depress you? They're always, I didn't get so-and-so. I didn't find what I wanted. I hoped I could, and I didn't, and everything thwarted me. No, you thwarted you. You were stupid enough to write this chart out. Now, be sensible enough and pleasant enough to live by it. It's truly the larger version of you made a big bed and you have to lie all over it. <laughs> and there's no way out except till the end and you graduate. 
you graduate and then's when the honor comes. But I see women and men both wasting their lives with this silly, wincing, whining, I didn't get it, I've always done for, I've never gotten it back. It's if there's a tally sheet somewhere. That God in great omnipotent perfection and mercy says, well, let's see, B's done 42 things for people and she's only gotten three back. Well, we got to even that one up. It doesn't even up, does it, B? No, it doesn't even up. But in the unevenness of it, there is where that huge, huge, marvelous space and gap for perfection. That's where it is. That no man's land of I will make it. And I will make it as pleasant as I can. Yes, my body doesn't feel that good. No, I have a headache. I have a migraine. My back hurts. I'm getting older. Maybe my kids didn't turn out the way I wanted. Now I have grandkids. Yeah, that's okay too. But you know what I'm saying? It isn't perfect. I watched myself the other day. <laughs> And it's, it's kind of a cute story, but it, it was more meaningful to me probably than it will be to her till someday, is I was walking outside with Ia, Angel Ia, outside the crab house. Because being the kind of mother I am, and then when you watch your children raise their kids, you go, <laughs> My kids, I don't know about yours, sat in chairs when we, because I came from the old school that I threatened their life. But no, you see, we're into another generation. So she hangs by her teeth, you know, and isn't that cute? And I'm going, yeah. So I said, all right, we'll go walking outside. And so she had, we, there were sticks on the ground, and she picked up a stick. And I had a stick. And she looked over at my stick, and she said to me, Ia's stick is bigger than Bagdad's stick. She calls me Bagdad. I picked up her stick and broke it. I said, Bagdad's stick is bigger than Ia's stick. And it will always be bigger. The old queen does not abdicate that quickly. No reference to anyone in the audience, however. I told my son and daughter-in-law that I'd said that. They both said, huh? <laughs> well, genetics reproduce in the grandchildren, you know that. That's a scientific fact, by the way. That's why a lot of us running around as parents say of our children, where did they come from? <laughs> Who, what alien gene came in? And then your grandchildren come and finally you see some semblance of you reproduce. When she came downstairs with Groucho glasses on, running through the crowd, I said, oh, there, there I am. That's me. I can see me now. That's me. <clears throat> The love of God is the most magnificent thing that can ever be in your life. It has in mind. It is the driving force. It is the greatest lover. It is the greatest loved one. It is the greatest purpose that we're here. And by saying the words constantly that I love you God, seems to magnify your soul so much that the little picket fences go away, the little Mr. or Mrs. Wright goes away, how will I make it the next day goes away, because it truly is the loved one. It truly is the kingdom that rests through all adversity. That doesn't mean you don't get tired, you don't go into little spots of despair, depression. I've been there. 
But through all that, the hand of God is there. You may want to squeeze it tighter, but you never want to let go of it. You never, ever want to let go. Because in letting go, the hand still stays. God's hand. It's you that lets go. God's hand never retracts. You must know that. The hand is always there in a place to clutch yours, to hold it. So when you pull back, the hand stays. So this week, this day, mentally in your mind, reach that hand up and grab the hand of God. Oops, <laughs> my mistake. Now I got to repeat that. So, how will you strengthen your soul? And and it reminds me of you know reaching up and grabbing God's hand. How can you feel alone when you've got that knowledge that that sense uh, that you know God's there with you, holding hold, you're holding God's hand. Uh, so that's something to help uh, carry you through. Uh, I wanted to share, uh, we've got a meditation by Sylvia. So uh, I encourage you to take a few minutes, take a minute, you know, sit back, relax, take a few deep breaths to start relaxing your mind, body, and spirit. And this is a uh, meditation from this Sunday service by Sylvia. So enjoy. Oh, by the way, we encourage you to sit with your feet flat on the floor and your palms upward on your lap to receive that wonderful healing energy. Uh, let's see. Meditation. Okay, let's do a short meditation. There's out the cobwebs. And for this moment, this moment that we have in time, our world, our kingdom of God that our Lord said, and our blessed mother Asna is attending us. She with her golden sword that can cut through any negativity. We who can plant, like Larry says, the light columns of grace on everyone. We feel today that all the I should do's and I didn't do's and I wish I had's go away. That in the deepest recesses of our heart, our motive was pure. We didn't really, really do anything with avarice or greed or condemnation. Maybe sometimes we've been a little bit too judgmental, humanly so. But those are foibles of the human flesh. So release your soul from those tentacles of, I didn't do, I've come to a point in my life where I feel like I've been a failure. Don't let that creep in. That's a negative darkness. That's the despair waiting on the outside of light to come in. Know that you're protected by that light, but don't let the darkness poke holes in that. And in all that light, the hand of God, firm, loving, forgiving, all forgiving, all caring, all beauty, and knowing our soul, and our soul has no color, it has no creed. It doesn't have any of the disruptions of the human flesh. And that's the purity of the kingdom of God that resides. So let that hand not only reach to your hand, but reach into the very, very bowels of your soul and pull out any of the thorns that you've carried. And say to yourself, Dear God, I love you. Dear God, we love you. Dear God, we are the manifestation of your beauty and your work. Dear God, we are the genetic offspring of you. Make us more perfect, not only in your eyes, but our eyes and that we shine as examples for others. 
that are lost in this wilderness of I couldn't do's and I didn't do and I didn't make it. Let your golden scroll of knowledge descend. Written on that golden scroll is just the survival, just being here, just making it through. That we've been through hell, that we've been through the valley of the shadow, and dear God, through it all, I love you, we love you. Feel the presence of the Holy Spirit descending down the grace from Mother, Father, and the Christ that walks with us. Feel the energy coming back up through your body, making you light as a feather inside, dispelling depression. And on the count of three, <clears throat> bring yourself out, all the way out, feeling absolutely marvelous. One, two, three. Next week is the blessing of the children, and I will be here. So I will um, hope that all of you, we don't care if it's noisy, bring the children. It's a special day of blessing the children. So any children you know you want to bring, have around, bring them. This is a very, very important time celebration. Also, transession will resume in August, the first week of August. The reason why we took a sabbatical is because I was exhausted. Not that I have to do anything, but just to stay that late after I'm doing 14 readings a day has just been tough. Um, pray for me as I pray for you. I love you. I keep you with me always in my heart. And God bless you. And I'll see you next week. Okay, now I can speak. <laughs> I missed that before. Wonderful. Um, wonderful meditation and uh, updated news. And, and no, the blessing of the children isn't next week. It's today. <laughs> um, yes, that's part of this service. Where I'm uh, sharing. I'll share with you and we'll get to that here in a little bit. The prayer and, and the steps uh, to do that. Now it's time for uh, communion. I just want to make sure that's what, yeah, that's the next thing in line. Um, typically, uh, two ministers, you know, and visualize this, two ministers stand and hold the communion trays. Uh, the wine is typically non-alcoholic and everyone is welcome to participate. Uh, so please join me uh, in, the, in the communion prayer. Again, uh, the prayers are in the description or you can listen along as I read. Dear Father and Mother God, we ask you to witness this communion, which is a symbol of finding our own God-centeredness and Christ consciousness. In doing this action of taking bread and wine, we are impressing on our higher consciousness that we are dedicating our lives to God's will. The symbol of this communion for us through Nova Spiritus means we wish to be born into the new spirit of true spirituality and let go of all the guilt and karma of our past lives and start fresh and new. From this time forward, we will be on track fulfilling our themes and walking with the blessed aura of God's light. We do this as an activation of our will to symbolize to ourselves and the world that we walk in grace and free of all negativity. We ask this in your name. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sidal. Sacravillian Ahad. And now let's share in communion. We get a tiny crunchy edible of some kind. And a favorite juice. Mine happens to be ginger beer, um, flat ginger beer. <laughs> and for those of you, you know, I'm curious, what 
what fun um, drink that you, what what fun juice that you like to uh, participate in this ceremony? Now is the time for the healing prayer. Again, you can read along or or listen as I read for you. Dear Father and Mother God, we are all gathered here to love you and to receive your blessing and healing energies. We ask that you send your everlasting energy to heal all who are in need today, using the healing force that you as our omnipotent parents can provide. Send us all the power and force of your energy and love to heal us all, to sustain us all in our everyday lives so that we can continue to experience for you. Help us, to re help us to remain examples of your love and guide us back to you if ever we go astray from our chosen paths. Loving Mother and Father, help all our guides to channel your energy and the energy of the archetypes that surround this gathering in your name, so that the energy sent is received fully and completely in each and every one of us. For those loved ones that are unable to gather with us today, we also ask that you send them your healing energy and love, so that any malady, whether it be mental or physical, be completely healed and eliminated. We ask for this in your name, Mother and Father, the name of God. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sedal Sacrevillian Ahad. And let's see, we've now reached the portion of our service where we ask for your support. Uh, before submitting your contribution, please take a moment to thank Mother and Father God for the abundance in your life and to request this abundance continues to come into your life. We thank you for your support of this church by your heartfelt donations given when you can. Uh, you know, we depend upon the financial support from you, our parishioners, to pro provide these Sunday services and other benefits to you, our church community. May Mother and Father God bless you always. Thank you. Uh, there's different ways to donate. You can go to the website and uh, there's a, a button there for donations in addition to purchasing items. And you can either uh, uh, pay by PayPal, credit card, or Venmo. Fancy that. Uh, also, if you'd like to donate and get something in return, start a study group. And you can read more about that on our website. In addition, you can buy a book uh, by calling the office. If you buy the book directly from the office, those proceeds go directly to Novus. Some announcements. Uh, on the New Spirit Radio recently, New Spirit Radio, the trans sessions, uh, which I got to remind people while, while I host, uh, co host that show, that these trans sessions, you know, they're from uh, Francine. The information is from Francine, Sylvia's spirit guide, and would share information with us um, through Sylvia being a full trans medium. So I, you know, encourage you go and listen. Uh, recently, we had heard about, um, let's see, sandalwood. Oh, yeah. So sandalwood over sage, which is different than, of course, burning wooden sandals. Also, there was uh, some discussion about portals and singularities, uh, and which planets were colonized. Uh, which planets colonized Earth? So some fun discussion there. Uh, also. There's a novena. It's a special prayer ceremony uh, given to us by Francine uh, that everybody's welcome to participate in. Uh, let's see. Oh, also, um, Chris Dufresne, if you go to his website, you can uh, you know watch and join him on, oh, sorry, on YouTube and TikTok, and I think he's on Twitter uh, and Instagram. Uh, he's usually doing, uh, or very uh, often doing, um, question and answer. So get on there, watch for him. Uh, in addition, go to chrisrightnow.com, get your email on there so you're notified when any um, reading or question specials are, are offered. Uh, we found that. Uh, of course, Society of Nova Spiritus is on Facebook and YouTube. I'm working on Instagram. Uh, let's see, there, what's the other... 
Darn it. There's another platform, too. There's a discussion room there um, that I mentioned on New Spirit Radio Show. Uh, Discord. Thank you. That was the one I was thinking of. If you'd like to participate in a live uh, Sunday service, you can put your email on the website and you should get an invitation to Reverend Ellen Schloss has a special Zoom service once a month. And in addition, uh, I believe even this Sunday, uh, you can uh, get invited to the private Facebook group where they live stream the local uh, Las Vegas Sunday service. That's a mouthful. Um, so get invited to one of those if those are of interest to you. Let's see, the next Sunday service for Facebook and YouTube should be the next Sunday, first Sunday of each month. Which concludes the um, um, the announcements. And now, uh, I'd like you to participate in the uh, blessing of the children. So at this time, typically in a in-person um, Sunday service, the children would now uh, file up. And I'm going to read through uh, how the uh, service goes and then go through the prayer and, and the blessing. The children of the congregation come forward at this time. After the prayer is read, the anointers, you typically ministers, um, but you can do this for yourself, will dip their finger in the holy water and outline the three circles on the forehead of each child. And that... What did I do with the... So, I just want to demonstrate a little briefly, and then I'll read the prayer, and then I'll demonstrate again what you can do. So, just to visualize, you know, um, sorry, <laughs> visualize that you've got a, I've got a child in front of me, that you're going to draw just three circles, you know, after dipping your finger in the holy water. So, you can do that uh, in addition, and I'm going to show that again here after I read the prayer. So prayer for blessing of the children. Dear Father and Mother God, we ask today the blessings to be bestowed upon these children that stand before you. Let your light of healing, morality, and righteousness shine upon their souls today. Let not the roots of tentacles of darkness come near their souls. Let not any temptation of addiction be part of their lives' plan. Keep their souls under constant watch and protection so that no darkness comes into their sphere of consciousness. Bless and guide them to stay on track and bring about a better good in their lives and the lives of others. Bless their lives so they will be endowed with purpose and courage, and instill within their souls this day the light of everlasting grace. Amen. So at this time, if you've got the child with you or the pictures, you can do a blessing uh, around them. But it's just doing circles on their forehead with the, with the holy water. Now's the time for petitions and testimonials. You can place concerns on the website prayer chain or share them in the comments and we all will pray for them. And it doesn't matter when you've posted those. Uh, that's We're just asking for that now for all the, the prayers and petitions that were have been posted or requested. And also, be the prayer. If you see a need, fill it. So let's take a moment of silence. We're going to ask Mother God, the archetypes, the archangels, um, our guides, you know, if they can get involved as well. Uh, all the, the uh, different types of uh, helpful entities from the other side. Get out and, uh, no, visualize what that is, what you, you know, what you see or what you would like to see happen. Visualize it and, of course, ask for the greater good. So let's take a moment of silence and ask for our requests.
Amen. Now is the time for the benediction, which is the truest form of sacrament or sacred oath used by the Gnostics at Quamran centuries ago. It's led by a minister uh, or bishop or cardinal, and it's repeated by all. So this is a participation where I'm going to say a phrase, uh, a blessing, and you'll just repeat after me. Blessed be God the Father. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of Asna. Blessed be her holy name. Blessed be the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be the name of our founder, Sylvia Brown. Blessed be her holy name. Blessed be the archetypes that protect us. Blessed be their holy name. Blessed be our spirit guides. Blessed be all their names. Blessed be everyone here today. Blessed be all our names. Blessed be our loved ones not present. Blessed be all their names. Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sadal Sacravillian Ahad. And the translation is Blessed be this Queen on high who is sacred to all who come to her. And now uh, I'm concluding with the closing prayer. And this is a special prayer for this ceremony. Dearest Asna, Queen of the Universe, Goddess that rules on the side of God our Father, keep your mantle of protection around us. Accept our symbols as our gratitude to you and the help and love you have given to me and mine. Keep us forever in your heart as you are in ours. Keep this Gnostic movement pure and from harm so it may grow and spread your name. Help us to keep the nurturing love that you've, you have ordained and free the world from darkness and guilt. In doing so, dearest mother, we can help you bring unity to this world of strife. We petition the duality of the Father God, Om, and Mother Asna to bring us our God-centered Christ consciousness. If we are in darkness, mother, give us light. If we are in sickness, give us health. If we are in fear, give us courage. If we are alone, give us love. And above all, Mother, give us peace and plenty of protection from our enemies. In your blessed name, Amen. Arem Shem Beth Sadal Sacravillian Ahad. In the translation, Blessed be this Queen on high, who is sacred to all who come to her. Amen. God bless you. Have a great month. Now, visualize that you are leaving the small auditorium and that you feel energized and ready to take on what the world may bring. And sometime this month, get together with someone for some refreshments and socialize to share the energized feeling. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Wear a mask when it can help. Uh, you know, help you or the people around you and keep your six foot distance when it can help too. When you can, get vaccinated and boosted and I look forward to sharing with you again next month. Stay uplifted and we'll talk to you then.